And we're going to head over to Jonathan, Jonathan Bigliotti. Uh, he is in Saint Denis. Jonathan, I spoke to you earlier today as things were uh, just sort of actually still unfolding, sort of the tail end of the raid there in Saint Denis. Looks like things have changed quite a bit. Can you tell us what it's like there now? That's correct. Good morning to you, Anne-Marie. You can see behind me the barricades that existed here when we last spoke have been taken away. The heavy police activity no longer is really within our line of sight. The police have moved on after this raid wrapped up about two hours ago. The latest that we all know now, seven people taken into custody. And of course, those two people that were inside at the time that were killed, the female suicide bomber that detonated her vest, and then another suspect who was shot and killed by a neighbor, uh, by a sniper rather. A neighbor, we are told, was injured in all of this along with five police officers. Again, right now, though, the focus is on the identities of the seven that were taken into custody. Uh, Jonathan, I'm wondering what you've been hearing uh, regarding how it is. We heard from Phoebe Lanzer Wood there a moment ago, uh, who said that it was witness statements, surveillance video that helped lead police to believe that, in fact, uh, Abdel Hamid Abaoud was there in that apartment in uh, Saint Denis. Have you heard anything uh, additional? Uh, because I think a lot of people are wondering, well, how is it that they went from believing he went to Syria and then all of a sudden it turns out uh, they believe he's there, he was there in Saint Denis. I know it's almost like a game of where in the world is Abdel Hamid Aboud because you said it and put it perfectly. Brussels, Morocco, Syria, we have all these different places that he could be. Up until today, uh, officials and the intelligence that we were getting suggested that he was in Syria remotely operating and playing a role in Friday's attack. In terms of the information that we're getting, nothing more concrete than you are hearing yourselves. We don't know what true intelligence led them to believe that Abood was inside this apartment where this raid took place today. We do know that text messaging, that surveillance, and that eyewitnesses account could have played a role in bringing this raid here. We also know, though, that hundreds of raids have been conducted over the past 48 hours, and through those raids, we've seen over a dozen or so arrests. So of course, intelligence is constantly being gathered, and as that intelligence is being gathered, it's being assessed and reassessed. And through this process, I am sure police are reconfiguring their approach and following new leads. And certainly, a very concrete lead led police and officials to this apartment. What will come out of what happened in this apartment is still part of this ongoing investigation. Now, uh, Abdel Hamid Abaoud is one person that police are looking for. They're looking for a number of people, but they're also searching for the yeah. brother of one of the uh, one of the men killed in the Friday the 13th attack as well. Correct? That's correct. Uh, Salah Abdus Salam, his older brother, uh, was a suicide bomber killed in the attacks. Salah Abdus Salam is the one that got away, and we heard from his younger brother, who pled for him to come forward and turn himself in. Uh, but that has obviously not happened at this point. Four hours after the attacks, we do know that police almost had them in their grips. He was pulled over in a car near Brussels. But at that point, a warrant wasn't out for his arrest, and he was allowed to go on his way. He was the focus of this huge manhunt for the past few days, and only yesterday we learned that now there could be a second fugitive at large. We don't know the identity of that fugitive, but now we certainly do see the bigger puzzle of all this coming together. Two fugitives, including Abdus Salam, still at large this morning. Jonathan, have you had a chance to talk to residents there? I mean, in the shot behind you, I can see people, you know, walking around sort of going about their business. Uh, I wonder what, uh, number one, their reaction is, but also what kind of area is Saint Denis? Yeah, so uh, two questions here, really. So the, the residents terrified. And, and a perfect example is somebody that uh, we got on camera talking about their experience. A father and his son who were asleep, but keep in mind, four o'clock in the morning, local time when all this happened, the door was pounded on as police said, you've got to get out. This place could blow up. Again, keep in mind that there were explosions going off and a lot of gunfire. In terms of this region here, we're about 30 minutes outside of the center of 
of Paris. Saint-Denis is a predominantly Muslim area. It is on the government's no-go list for people to come here. And there is extremist behavior registered in this area. And that is why some of the raids that we have seen, including this morning's one, have been focused and honed in on this area. This place, though, very much on edge, especially now with this realization seven suspects uh, connected to the attacks, we believe, were pulled from one of the apartments here. I don't know uh, if you know this or not, but after the Charlie Hebdo attacks, do you know if Saint Denis was a, a, a place that authorities looked at? Uh, that's a that's a great question, Anne Marie, and, and I don't know to be honest with you, and I don't want to speculate. Uh, in this case, uh, my knowledge doesn't extend back to back to January of last year, of earlier this year. Uh, Jonathan, let me ask you this, because we heard from uh, the Interior Minister, Bernard Kazanouv, uh, who gave us uh, a little bit of a sense of the scope of this raid. Right now we're showing our viewers some pictures, uh, some of which I know were obtained on social media. But, you know, as you said, residents in the area were absolutely terrified. Uh, and, you know, one can only imagine what that must have been like for them to be woken up, roused from their sleep around 4 o'clock in the morning, only to see that all of this terrorist act, uh, activity, alleged terrorist activity, uh, was so close. Uh, give us a sense again of just how big an operation on the part of French police this was. Yeah, certainly. I mean, when we arrived here at this scene, we arrived about, I would say, two hours after the reports first started filtering in. And even at that stage, we're talking hundreds of police officers and military troops in this area, blocking it off, honing in on that one location. Hundreds of people, of course, live in this area tons of apartments around here and they had to all individually be safely evacuated as what has been described as a war zone type scene was unfolding before their very eyes. You were playing the video and we heard the loud explosions and that gunfire and you have to imagine being a resident here waking up to this and certainly being a child because we've heard uh, several eyewitness accounts of children that had to get out and we've seen people being cleared out of here throughout the morning as this uh, raid was taking place. Right now the bear Barriers have been taken down as we started off this report telling you and so the sense of normalcy if you could even call it that maybe a new norm is starting to unfold here as people kind of get back to their lives and what is amazing is how quickly people kind of do start to mill around after what unfolded here but certainly terrifying moments earlier this morning as that initial gunfire and those explosives rung out here. Jonathan Vigliotti in Saint-Denis thank you very much Jonathan.